OSPF in Microtik Router OS version 6 basic single area setup. Microtik Router OS implements OSPF version 2. The OSPF protocol is the link state protocol that takes care of the routes in the dynamic network structure that can employ different paths to its subnetworks. It always chooses shortest path to the subnetwork first. For official documentation and more information with regards to Microtik implementation of OSPF, you can check their wiki site. As our demonstration for a basic single area OSPF setup, we have three routers. We have three devices in the backbone area or area zero, a Microtik, Cisco, and FortiGate. As we are more focused on Microtik in this tutorial, so devices such as Cisco and FortiGate are pre-configured to operate OSPF in a basic level. For our task, so we will verify first if in this Microtik, we have our IP address on Ether2, that is 10.0.0.1 slash 24, as well as it should have a loopback interface with an IP address of 172.16.0.1 slash 32. So let's check the IP address on Ether2. So we go to IP addresses. And yes, there is an IP address of our Ether2 interface 10.0.0.1/24 with a network address of 10.0.0.0, and all is in place for Ether2 interface. Next is for our loopback interface. So, but before we will have our IP address here, in order to create a loopback interface in Microtik, so we just need to go to bridge. Go to the bridge tab, click the plus sign, and create a bridge. So for example, LO0 is the name of this bridge interface or loopback interface for its purpose. So what makes it a loopback interface for this matter is that this bridge don't have any assigned ports. So that is how we can create sort of loopback interface in our Microtik, a bridge interface without any assigned ports. So once our loopback interface is ready, so we go to IP addresses and address our loopback interface. So that will be 172.16.0.1 slash 32. So there is no prefix or the slash 32 anymore. Because if we will put it on our address field and click apply and click OK, it will automatically consider that you are creating a single host or a single IP address for this interface. Next, let's have a quick check on our routing table for our Microtik device. So we go to IP routes. And as you notice, we only have two entries here which is our connected routes. So we have a connected route to our 10.0.0.0 network and we have a connected route on our loopback interface network or actually a single host IP address. So as stated, our Cisco and FortiGate devices are pre-configured and hopefully they are correctly configured. And let's try to see if these devices are now up and indeed reachable. So we could try to do a ping test. So tools, ping, tools, ping, and we have this utility. So let's try to reach 10.0.0.2, which is the IP address of our Cisco router. And yes, it's reachable. And this time, how about our FortiGate device 10003? So hopefully FortiGate or this device, we allow ping on this particular port. So we could test. So let's just change 2 to 3 and click start. And yes, our FortiGate is reachable as well. So you might be curious, how about if we could reach the loopback 
interface IP address of our Cisco and 48. So that will be 172.16.0.2 and 172.16.0.3 respectively. So let's try. So 172.16.0.2. Click start. And we don't have any reply. With the status no route to host. And dot 3 is also cannot be reached. No route to host. Of course, looking at the routing table. So IP routes. So as you can see or remember, we only have connected routes. So we don't have any route going to the loopback interface IP address of our Cisco and FortiGate. So we only know our loopback address and as well as the 10.0.0.0 network. So we hope our OSPF routing protocol will help us reach the loopback interface IP addresses of the other devices as well as if Cisco and FortiGate does have some local area networks or subnetworks on their respective device so our Microtik should be able to reach them as well using the dynamic routing protocol such as OSPF. So in order to run OSPF dynamic routing protocol in Microtik Router OS version 6, so the package or the routing package should be installed and enabled. So we could verify by going to system packages and scroll down. So we should see routing package that is installed and enabled. And then we should have the routing menu. And if we click the routing menu, we should see OSPF as one of its sub menus. And we click it and we should now have the OSPF window. There are several tabs in the OSPF window. So we have interfaces down to virtual links and there are more actually neighbors and down to the area border routers. But in Microtik, in a very basic level, you only need to go to the Networks tab in order to start or to the enable OSPF. But for our demo, we will up a notch a bit and we will include configuration on interfaces, instance, network and we will check the area tab. So let's begin. So you'll notice we don't have any configuration on interfaces. We have a default instance. We don't have any networks. And we have a default backbone area. So if you go to the neighbors, it doesn't have any neighbors yet. So meaning to say, although Cisco and FortiGate devices are pre-configured with their basic OSPF configuration, the neighbor adjacency in OSPF is not formed. So that is why we will do our part and configure our Microtik device. So we could do that by going to the menus mentioned, interfaces, instance, networks. And I do like to start on the instances, although as noted, it is not the first tab. But I would like to configure the router ID which provides a unique identity on our OSPF router, in this case our Microtik device. So let's go in and one of the best suited router ID will be our loopback interface IP. So we will type here 172.16.0.1. As this is a basic OSPF setup, we will not touch yet the redistribution part and the filtering part as well as changing of metrics and MPLS. We will only touch the router ID. Click apply, click OK. Next, I would like to go to interfaces tab. So from here, you will declare what are the interfaces that would participate in the OSPF. So in our case, we will only want our Ether2 to be able to participate on our OSPF. 
and we will also include loopback interfaces. So OSPF interfaces will actually display here or will appear here dynamically once the neighborship is formed or once our OSPF is running. But the advantage of putting a static OSPF interface is what you can see on the menu. You'll have the priority, the cost, and you could also have the authentication. Again, as this is a basic single area OSPF tutorial only, so we will not touch these settings. So we will only go and select the interface. In our case, it's Ether2. So click apply, click OK. And we will also add our loopback interface. So LO0. But since we are here, might as well change the priority. So the higher the priority, the better it is to become a designated router in a broadcast network type, for example. But again, as this is a basic tutorial only, let's focus on our objective that it will form as neighbors. So but for the time being, let's change the priority to a higher one so that our microtech becomes the designated router. So we will also change our loopback interface priority. Next, so after instances, interface, actually we would want to go to area if we have other than the backbone area. So if we have other standard area or stub areas, for example, we have area 1, area 2, for example, so we will add them here. But for this tutorial, since we are making a backbone area, so in router OS version 6, there is already a default area with an area ID of 0 as our backbone area. So we don't need to add more area in this tutorial for our OSPF. And we could now go to the Networks tab. So as mentioned, only here in Network tab, so we could start the OSPF protocol by supplying or defining the networks on which the OSPF will run. And we will also associate that particular network on which particular area. So that's why it's important that we will create the areas first before we go to the networks. It is only because we are doing a single area, a backbone area. So that is why we could straight away go to networks actually. So we will add the networks. For example, in our topology, we have 10.0.0 network. So 10.0.0.0 slash 24 on the backbone area. We don't have any other choice. Apply OK. And we will also include our loopback interface. So 172.16.0.1. So it's a single host. So click apply, click OK. So as a quick review, we started with changing the router ID in the instances tab. We have our interfaces. We declare the interfaces, Ether2 and the loopback interface. We go and explain to you the area and we now add the networks. So as you notice on the instance, the running is now yes. So a while ago, it's no. And hopefully we will see neighbors now. So let's check our neighbors tab. And yes, we did see we now have two neighbors. So 172.16.0.2 identifies our Cisco router and we have 172.16.0.3 which our FortiGate firewall device is also a participant or a neighbor in our OSPF dynamic routing protocol. So we should also see link state advertisements or LSAs. So we have the type 1 and the type 2, the network type. And the designated router is our 40 gate router in this scenario. So we have OSPF routes. So we have our 10.0.0 route. 
we have the loopback addresses now dot three and dot two and finally we should see in our routing table ip routes we should have ospf routes so we have dynamic active ospf so remember we only have connected routes before we implement ospf now we know the loopback interface of our cisco router and the loopback interface ip of our 40 gate firewall via ospf Let's do a ping test again if indeed these loopback interface IP addresses are reachable. So we go to tools, ping. So let's start first with our Cisco 16.0.2. And yes, it is now reachable. Let's check our FortiGate firewall. And yes, our FortiGate loopback is also reachable. Catch our next video on the same topology as we will show how it is done on the FortiGate and Cisco side as well. We might do the configurations in CLI. Thank you for watching.